Hello, my name is Lawrence Citrullo. Today I'll be discussing tissue separating mesh. I have no disclosures. Tissue separating mesh is mesh that is used most often intraperitoneally to reduce potential for adhesion formation after ventral hernia repair. Many manufacturers use different materials for their tissue separating layer, and I have listed some of the more common ones below, specifically ones that will be discussed in studies later in this presentation. Tissue separating mesh should be used primarily in the intraperitoneal space, where there's, le there's good benefit for its efficacy, there's less benefit for its use in the retromuscular or in the preperitoneal spaces. Most commonly used for incisional, ventral, or peristomal hernias, where mesh needs to be placed intraperitoneally for other reasons. I'm now gonna discuss a few studies just showing the benefit of tissue separating mesh. This was a porcine model of intraperitoneal mesh placements. They tested poly, plain polypropylene mesh, EPTFE or extended polytetrafluoroethylene mesh, and polypropylene with a hyaluronic acid barrier layer. The pictures shown uh, here show the amount and quality of adhesions to the mesh. This study measured total adhesion area covering the mesh and type of adhesions. As you can see, the tissue separating mesh used had much reduced overall adhesion formation, as well as reduced visceral adhesion formation, specifically compared to the plain uncoated polypropylene mesh. This was the only thing in this study that had statistical significance. Comparisons to the EPTFE mesh showed a trend toward fewer adhesions, but did not meet statistical significance. In this study of 183 patients with ulcerative colitis or FAP undergoing colectomy, the patients were randomized to receive or not receive a hyaluronic acid barrier layer to prevent reduce adhesion formation. These patients were evaluated at eight to 12 weeks during loop ileostomy closure for the presence of adhesions laparoscopically. They evaluated 175 patients. They found that 94% of the control patients had some form of adhesions to the midline closure, whereas in the control group, 43% had no adhesions. So a significant reduction in the number of adhesions in the control versus the, or excuse me, in the intervention versus the control group. Looking at quote unquote dense adhesions, they found that in the control group, 58% of the patients had dense adhesions, whereas in the in intervention group, only 15% had dense adhesions. This was a double blinded randomized study. This list of meshes will be used in the next slide using polypropylene mostly, as well as some polyester with different bioabsorbable layers, either collagen-based for the pariatex, an omega fatty acid layer for the C-Cure, and the EPTFE layer for the Intramesh T1. This was a rat model comparing multiple tissue types of separating mesh versus non-separating mesh. Again, like the prior study we discussed, polypropylene mesh had the highest adhesion rates, but, all, but of note, all types of coated mesh had significantly lower adhesion formation compared with the plain uncoated mesh. So comparing adhesion formation rates between the different types of mesh showed no statistical significant rate of adhesion when looking at two different types of barrier mesh. The follow-up was 30 days, as that's when the RAD model was sacrificed. This was one of the first studies showing that there was no difference between the different types of barrier mesh material, but they did find that the, any type reduced the adhesion formation. Here's another study, this is a single institution. <clears throat> Again, this is now a human model, single institution, looking at laparoscopic incisional and ventral hernia repair. 
13,000 patients were evaluated in this study, and 10% had reoperation for a variety of reasons. The importance of this study showed that with the uh, coded mesh that was used in this study, 45% were adhesion free, 42% had minor adhesions, and 13% had bowel adhesions to the abdominal wall, showing that the mesh related <clears throat> adhesions were significant in over half of the patients. Now I'm starting to talk about some, some conflicting evidence. In 2008, a study used time mesh alone or time mesh with a barrier later called polyactide or surgery wrap. This is again a porcine model. They looked at two different time frames, but pigs um, were sacrificed three months post implantation. In the two groups, there was no significant difference in terms of omental adhesion rate between the two groups, 32 versus 33.5%. There were no adhesions to intestine in either group. So the slowly applied barrier in this case showed no benefit. This is a rat model, again, showing the different types of mesh used with surf different surface layers. Most were polypropylene, but they did include a polyester, so another plastic material. What they found was that even with the tissue separating mesh, adhesion still formed. And regardless of the mesh type, the fixation material and the cut edges of the mesh had the most adhesions. Adhesions were examined at seven and 30 days post implantation. These are their results showing the amount of adhesions to viscera. As you can see, the majority of animals had adhesions of some type or another, regardless of the type of mesh. We're going to briefly discuss some tips for use. Tissue separating mesh uh, when inserting laparoscopically, use your largest port possible to avoid scraping off uh, too much of the coating layer, as this is the number one thing that will lead to intestinal adhesion formation to the mesh itself. Try to wrap the mesh with the coated layer on the inside versus the outside to prevent scraping off of the coating. When tacking or suturing the mesh into place, avoid dragging your instruments across the barrier layer, which would then scrape off the coating. Create a system for yourself to keep track of which side is the coated layer and which is the knot, whether that's leaving a suture tail that is visible on the anterior or non-coated aspect that will face the abdominal wall, or whether that's using a marker to make sure you know which side should face up. Regardless of what you do, everybody needs a system in order to best keep track of this. The last thing I would say is when consenting your patients, Remind them that this type of mesh is, does not prevent or make adhesions zero, but it will be safer to reduce the adhesion formation. When implanting this mesh, again, the keys are to make sure you're keeping track of which side is which, so that you don't accidentally flip the mesh over and avoiding scraping the bio layer off in terms of is there a type of mesh that is better than the other for this type of procedure? No, the evidence seems to show that any of the commercially available uh, adhesion prevention layers work as well as any of the others. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. I hope it was helpful.